Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. My name is Ariba Shabir and we have been discussing English language teaching. Now we are going to study older and young learners creating profiles. Before we proceed further, let us recapitulate of what we did in the last session. In the last session, we discussed about the learners who, uh, who are important components of any second language pedagogy. So, we understood that knowing the second language learner can help the educator design tasks and activities efficiently. Moreover, we discussed that learner centered class is an important one and it encourages learning in an effective way. It encourages participants to take part in activities and express themselves freely. It is also important to look for the psychological, social, motivational and individual factors which are responsible for the growth of language learners. Moreover, we identified that it is important to learn the nature of the motivation as far as the second language learners are concerned. We talked about the importance of the prior knowledge which helps the learner absorb information efficiently and effectively. After this session, you will be able to understand the differences between teaching young and older learners. You will be able to distinguish between second language acquisition and second language learning. Moreover, you will be able to review the critical period hypothesis, behavioral approaches and universal grammar. Moreover, you will be able to create the learner's profile on the basis of their demographic information such as gender, age, ethnicity, location, etc. and their characteristics such as learning styles and preferences. So, dear learners, when we talk about young and older learners, we need to understand that what is uh, the older learner and we need to understand who is the older learner and who is the young learner. So, let us look up at this slide and uh, uh, I will try to mention some of the key points which are important in considering young and older learners. So, as you see here that it is important to look how a young learner is defined and how an older learner is defined. So, young learner is basically defined as any student which comes under the age of 80, right? And uh, he or she looks for language uh, education or you can say that uh, this person might be learning out of uh, the uh, course that is being given to him. Moreover, there is an adult or you can say older learner who is defined as any student who are the age of 18 plus. And when we talk about young learner, we cannot forget that they come in varieties. Now, what is the variety of the young learners? They come uh, in vast developmental changes that occur uh, during their growth. For example, a five year old would be a different learner than the, uh, than the learner who is 15 year old. So, you know, when we talk about a 15 year old learner, then we cannot forget that he or she has already taken up a lot of knowledge with regard to language. Therefore, we can say that the first of these very young learners who include toddlers and preschoolers typically uh, come under the age of 7 years as well. I will write here toddlers or you can say um, preschoolers. 
However, we find that these days uh, students by the age of uh, 3 and uh, less than 3 uh, they get into school and they start learning language. So how it is going to help them as far as their uh, growth is concerned and their language learning and acquisition is concerned. So, there are some typical qualities of uh, learners as far as adult learners are concerned and young learners are concerned. So, what are those qualities? Let us try to find out here. You know, when we teach to adult learners, we need to uh, think of certain important matters. First is that uh, uh, older learners uh, or you can say adult learners, they, they speak uh, with lot of background knowledge, right? So, they have already made a special background of language learning and acquisition. Or you can say that uh, in classroom, the teachers need to be aware in order to adapt their teaching methods. Because uh, if we look up their typical qualities, then one of the biggest advantages for a teacher of adult learners is that they typically have the choice to learn second language. Right, and uh, uh, they pay a significant amount of money to do this. For this reason, uh, adult learners are usually very motivated students, which means the teacher can focus on teaching as opposed to finding strategies to motivate uh, an unmotivated class. However, there is a little difference when it comes to the uh, young learners because he or she is not learning out of his choice. He or she has come to school uh, out of the parental force or you can say that becomes a part of their schooling and that is the reason why he or she aims to learn the language as an important component of their study. So, this is one of the typical difference when it comes to uh, second language learning and of course, young and older learners. Uh, there are some other important aspects that we need to keep in mind that young learners they do not have as such a big uh, prior knowledge with regard to their surroundings. So, basically they are in the process of forming their schema or you can say they are in the process of forming uh, their knowledge which way which they will further use it as, uh, as a prior knowledge. However, when it comes to older learners they already have stored a lot of information information and therefore, you can say that whatever they will use in their language classroom or outside of their classroom, they will refer to what has already have uh, uh, happened in their young age. Now, coming up to the next slide, we will try to look up at the instrumental and integrative enforcements since these are important concepts and uh, uh, these will tell you that how a learner can uh, integrate uh, motivation in his or her language learning pedagogy. So, uh, if I talk about the instrumental enforcements, I would say that a learner is uh, basically motivated by himself or he or she is uh, uh, taking it out as a source of passion. However, when it comes to integrative, then he is likely to expand his uh, language learning in a better uh, situation or you can say in a better surrounding or uh, he or she is likely to use this information in real life situations. So, at times it happens like we studied in the last session there, there are some motivational drives which enforces the learner to go through uh, certain aspects and we also realize that uh, learners do not come with an empty mind rather they are coming up with lot of uh, uh, points that they really would like to forward. Uh, to take it from here. So, uh, we need to understand that what is the motivation that is driving them and why they are coming with the purpose of uh, 
why they are coming to uh, take the language education as an important part of their development. So, these are some of the important considerations that one should always take into consideration and uh, understanding their enforcements, understanding their motivation, understanding their uh, strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you can say their nature and attitude will help the educator to understand the language pedagogy in an efficient way and it will enhance their growth not only in terms of intellect but also in terms of, uh, of, of uh, understanding the world in a better way. Therefore, we can say that uh, uh, there is uh, an important concept when we talk about uh, language learning as far as the young learners are concerned because uh, we saw that uh, some students uh, get the learning after a certain age. However, some students are grown up into uh, the language. So, uh, Krashen, who is one of the important linguists in this era, has tried to distinguish the two important concepts and he has said that there is a sharp differentiation between language learning and language acquisition and especially he has referred SLL as a second language learning and SLA as second language acquisition. So, second language learning refers to the learning which takes place after a certain period of life or you can say that you consciously learn this language by understanding its grammatical features and you try to place the word order and then you go through with uh, vocabulary items and understand in this way. How are second language acquisition talks about those uh, uh, developmental factors which take place at a very early age. It does not uh, let the learner to go through the grammatical aspects like phonology or morphology or syntax or semantics. Rather, a learner uh, gradually finds himself developing in the language and whenever or wherever the stimuli is being given to the learner, he or she is likely to use it frequently. Therefore, uh, this is the main distinction which uh, SLL that is second language learner and uh, or you can say second language learning and second language acquisition is being distinguished upon. Now, going on to the uh, another important uh, concept that is critical period hypothesis. This is uh, very important because it talks about the developmental factors when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to the acquisition and learning of language. And let me tell you, dear learners, that there has been a lot of debate that whether we as Indian speakers are learning the language or acquiring the language. However, later it was clarified that uh, we are the second language learners and uh, we will see that how it goes under the light of critical period hypothesis which is largely discussed in the linguistics and uh, in the English language teaching pedagogy. So, I am uh, uh, I'm referring to the slide critical period hypothesis and it claims that there is an ideal time to acquire language in a linguistically rich environment or you can say language acquisition becomes more difficult after a certain period. So, language uh, acquisition is uh, easier at a young age and it becomes difficult at a later age. Easy at young age as I am writing over here and difficult uh, at, a little, at, a, at a later stage. So, does that uh, imply that older learners cannot learn English or older learners cannot learn language or does this mean that older and young learners cannot be compared when it comes to language learning or does this uh, reveal that uh, language learning is not the 
uh, is, uh, language learning process is not same when it comes to uh, uh, older learners and younger learners. So, we will try to find out what is the actual uh, uh, idea behind this hypothesis which is being claimed. Let me tell you that this states as a first few years of life which are considered as the crucial time in which an individual acquires first language ok, first language with adequate uh, stimuli. Now, here stimuli refers to uh, refers to the input which a child gets while growing up. Sometimes we see that uh, when a child is growing, he or she gets a lot of uh, uh, knowledge, a lot of lo lot of exposure with regard to the usage of the language. Therefore, we see that this child starts imitating the language, and therefore gradually he acquires the entire language. Uh, basically, a child starts with fragmented words. Uh, uh, he or she starts with the words which are uh, spoken in isolation, but later on he uh, develops a full frame in which the language is used uh, in a more adequate way. And uh, of course, contextualized uh, uh, utterances are being then spoken at the age of uh, 3 or a little a uh, later if there is a delay in the speech. Therefore, you can say that uh, if language input does not occur after this time at the age which is very critical or you can say which is very important where the acquisition or where the learning takes place at that point of time if uh, the stimuli does not take place in an adequate manner then uh, we will realize that uh, the learner may or may not uh, uh, may not uh, get a full command of language. So, there is much debate however, over the time of the critical period that it is whether uh, the age between 2 and 13 and if this varies. However, uh, this particular hypothesis has faced a lot of criticism as well. Let me tell you that from where this uh, particular uh, hypothesis come from, this is derived from the concept of a critical period in the biological sciences, which refers to a set period in which an organis uh, organism must acquire a skill or you can say ability or uh, strictly speaking the experimentally verified critical period uh, related uh, relates to a span during uh, which a damage to the visual system can occur. For example, if animals are deprived of the uh, necessary binocular input for developing uh, stereopsis. So, we can here conclude that uh, critical period hypothesis has given a significant contribution as far as the language learning and language acquisition is concerned. It has revealed certain important aspects that language can be acquired at a period of time. However, there is a debate and there are uh, concerns that uh, language can be, uh, uh, can be learned at a later stage as well. Now, uh, coming up to the uh, point which is mentioned here is as universal grammar. This is an important notion which was given by Professor Noam Chomsky and uh, Chomsky said uh, that uh, environmental factors must be relatively unimportant. So, here I am writing environmental, environmental factors factors are unimportant. Why? Because he uh, claims that language is already hardwired into the brain when a child has not even taken birth in the world. Therefore, there are so many factors that uh, contributes to the uh, universal grammar, the concept which Chomsky has given and uh, in the universal grammar he given, he has given a term called language acquisition device. Language 
right so uh, learners uh, we can say that uh, language acquisition device is an important component in uh, anybody's life because uh, it uh, tells uh, the uh, it tells the user to use language in a way and uh, as chomsky mentioned that uh, environmental factors are not as important as we need to think rather it is all about the language acquisition device which is already present in our brain and uh, 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 therefore you can say that uh, there are innate uh, principles that guides the child to use a language in a in a in a in a order right so let me give you an example over here that when a child starts speaking then does he or she follow any grammatical rule or do you think that uh, this child starts uh, taking the note of the word order or tenses or something like this i'm sure your answer would be no why because a child gets a stimuli and then after getting the stimuli he or she tries to uh, formulate his own language so the question here is from where does he know that this is the word order from where he knows that uh, uh, this is the subject this is the verb and you know i have to place the first uh, subject and then the later the verb or the later object or you know vice versa because in english we follow a different word order in hindi we follow a different word order and similarly the other languages so we need to look up at those factors which uh, uh, which which we which say that language comes uh, uh, adequately and uh, it is not that uh, a child or uh, you can say that a young learner needs to learn rather he automatically or you can say he or she gradually learns it so the answer uh, to these questions is of universal grammar which chomsky has uh, mentioned in his uh, uh, in his uh, important uh, guidelines and he said that it is because of the innate principle it is because of the language acquisition device which is already there in the brain so when a child is exposed to the language he or she automatically starts making the sense out of it and arrange uh, the important components of the language in a sequential way now uh, going on to the next important slide it is uh, it is it says that what are the other influences in second language learning and uh, there are three important notes that are being mentioned over here first is the natural situation the second is the classroom situation and the third is the attitude so let's go step by step and find out what does the natural situation mean a natural situation for second language learning is one where the second language is experienced in a in a in a, in a situation you can say in a in a situation and that is similar to the native language so uh, one of the important uh, scholars uh, uh, steinberg in 2001 he states that children can learn second language faster than adults and uh, because this happens this happens because of being in natural situation so it simply refers to the idea that if a young learner is being exposed or you can say is being given a situation where he or she is supposed to use the language then the learning takes place in an easier way and in an efficient way now going on to the second point it says classroom situation 
So, what is classroom situation? Here uh, the situation remains slightly constrained. Here situation is not as wider as the natural situation is. So, what does uh, the classroom situation refers to? Basically, the classroom is isolated from other social life. So, you can say that the classroom for second language learning is a planned uh, a situation or you can say it is a planned classroom where you plan tasks or where you plan activities or you make uh, your learners think about a particular uh, aspect. Therefore, the teacher is the one who knows the social life and in the room there is a teacher and the students or you can say there is a teacher and the learners. So, teacher is the one who knows the second language and the students are those who are aiming to learn the language. So, in the space of the classroom nothing happens unless the teacher makes it happen, right? And in the classroom students do not uh, act as they want, they would take a guide or they would work under the teacher and they would take advices of the teacher. The teacher would give a would give an environment, would give would provide a context a setting to perform. Therefore, it would be slightly restricted, slightly narrowed as compared to the natural situation. And uh, the best thing to distinguish between natural situation and classroom situation is that in natural one, uh, uh, the uh, uh, factors are are very much unpredictable. You never know what is going to influence whom and uh, therefore, uh, you can think of the classroom situation where everything is planned and everything comes in an order. Therefore, a child when, a learns, uh, when he or she learns in a natural situation is likely to get uh, language in an efficient way and also gets the, uh, gets the platform to respond, to react and uh, get varieties when it comes to the exposure. But what about the classroom situation? If natural situation gives immense opportunities to the learner, then does classroom situation also provides any opportunity? So, it is up to the teacher. if a teacher brings diversity into the classroom or you can say if a teacher uh, makes a class learner centered. In other words, if I say that teacher uh, makes this class interesting and also makes it more natural, then there are chances that students get opportunities and also they are likely to use language in an efficient way. Therefore, natural situation is one which happens gradually and which you cannot ignore or you cannot avoid. But classroom situation is where you can make things, where you can plan things and you can work accordingly. Now, another important factor which is mentioned in this slide is attitude. So, what is attitude? Attitude is about the learner and of course, when we talk about attitude, we basically categorize into two important types, negative and the positive, uh, positive attitude. So, uh, it becomes easier for, a, for an educator to encourage a person who comes with a positive attitude and not just it happens with the older learners, but also with younger learners. But imagine a situation where the learner is discouraged or the learner is not willing to take part uh, in the language classroom. Or you can say if the learner does not find enough uh, motivation to attend the class, then what does happen at that point of time? You can say it is up to, up to the educator uh, that how he brings diversity, how he respects uh, the emotional and psychological uh, factors which are influencing the learner and also how uh, he or she is going to uh, make this attitude a better one. So, uh, Attitude uh, constitutes a very important part in anyone's uh, uh, in anyone's uh, learning pedagogy, and that's how we differentiate between the natural situation, classroom situation, and attitude, which uh, influence not only the learner but also the educator.
So, going on to this slide, let us try to look up at learner's profile. Uh, I am sure after looking up uh, this slide, you might have a question that uh, what is learner's profile or what is the need of the learner's profile or why are we creating learner's profile? Does that make any sense? Does that have any significance when it comes to teaching? So, let me tell you that as it is written in this slide, a learner's profile is a document or you can say it is a conversation that takes place between the learner and the educator and it helps uh, uh, the educators to learn more about their students. So, as I discussed in the last session also and we have been trying to put these aspects in this session as well that learners, uh, 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 let, let learners come with heterogeneity, uh, they come with variety of experiences, they come with a lot of uh, factors which can be in the form of psychological, social, emotional or effective uh, factors. So, the question here is that if we incorporate learners profile in the language uh, teaching pedagogy, then how it is going to help uh, them? and how it is going to help uh, the teacher. So, the utmost or you can say the ultimate answer is that language teaching uh, becomes easier or you can say it becomes more comprehensible, it becomes more a, uh, extensive when you incorporate uh, learners views, learners per, uh, perspectives, learners preferences and of course their choices with regard to their uh, styles, with regard to their um, intake with regard to their speed of learning. Therefore, you see that some students are highly competent, some students they approach towards the modest uh, speed and also we find some students who are quite novice, they really do not have a much background of language. So, they are coming with almost an empty mind and thinking that uh, teacher will give them uh, everything about the language. So, uh, it is important to look up at the profile and this will help the teacher to design uh, activities and tasks and also it will help the teacher to find out which skills uh, to be focused more. And moreover, one of the important thing is that when you know the person's strengths and weaknesses or when you know the person's interests, then you are inclined to produce things which are uh, more interesting uh, for them. Because uh, here in second language learning, interests play a very prominent role. If a learner starts taking interest, then he or she is likely to acquire language easily and quickly. However, when it happens that uh, uh, however when, when strengths and interests are not being identified, then uh, language learning becomes slightly difficult or you can say it becomes uh, slightly uh, not, uh, uh, not open to the uh, perspectives that learners keep with regard to their uh, uh, with regard to their interest. So, uh, I what I am trying to mention over here is that there are several uh, points that one should consider when creating a profile be a older younger be a older learner or young learner and also it is important to think about the passions, it is important to think about the likes and dislikes because if, uh, uh, if a learner see or you know finds himself in indulging those activities or you can say indulging in, uh, in, in indulging in the learning style which he ha has not preferred so far. So, it is going to create a little complex uh, for him. So, uh, as you know that uh, we have been discussing about the traditional methods of teaching, right? Uh, we discussed that how uh, in older, uh, how, how in the uh, last classes or you can say how in the uh, uh, in, in the olden times, teacher used to take a central position in the class and uh, learners were given less opportunities or you can say almost 
no opportunities to express themselves. But then there came the idea of a diversity, there came the idea of uh, uh, putting up their views, the opportunities, platforms, democracy and so on. So coming up this, uh, when these perspectives were introduced and they were given value, then educators realized that learners profile will help them to contribute in an efficient way and uh, not only to uh, to uh, to uh, prepare you know specific materials but also help the learners outside the classroom and inside the classroom now the question here is what are the important contents that learners profile should include or what are the important uh, considerations you are going to incorporate when it comes to learners profile. So here is the list as you see in this slide, first is the skills, strengths and interests. So what is the person's skill? Uh, if you see that there is any artistic skill for example, then you can use a, a Pictionary to help learners demonstrate uh, several important vocabulary items or you can help uh, learners uh, to draw something and uh, ask other peer members to identify what does this particular thing is called. So in this way you will be able to understand that what is their inclination, what special skill do they possess. You know uh, nowadays we have total physical response as well. So if the students are interested in doing physical activity you can just demonstrate, you can say and give command and students will perform at the same time you say jump and students would start jumping you say uh, uh, you know turn right or turn left and see how students uh, follow your command in this way they acquire language they get a lot of fun and moreover they find themselves connected with the activities which are being given in the language classroom right now coming up to their strengths because as uh, mentioned again and again that uh, strengths create a person and uh, strengths provide power to students right they provide strengths provide uh, enhancement uh, to learners therefore if we consider their strengths maybe uh, they are having a good oratory skills and they might be lacking uh, you know some of the important guidelines so if you give them a task to speak and uh, if you give them to uh, come and address uh, students and uh, you assign tasks like you are speaking in a, in, a, in a public gathering, then they will find themselves more connected. Also, they will get an idea that their perspectives are getting valued, their strength is being valued and they are not only getting chance to enhance their language but also uh, 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 getting chance to, uh, to il illustrate their, uh, their strengths. Right. Now what is their interest? Let me tell you that there is a sharp differentiation between interest and hobbies because hobbies is something which we uh, regularly pursue but interest is something which in which we are inclined to. For example, adventure activities. So adventure activities uh, you can say that uh, they cannot be practiced regularly. However, hobbies are something which are cultivated regularly which become the part of our life or you can also think that hobbies are uh, something which you are con in uh, through which you are connected with. Therefore, uh, if a person's interest is in music or you can say if a person interest in uh, arts or if a person has interest in games and so on. So you can you know make tasks or you can give them opportunities to do certain things uh, on the on the basis of their uh, which matches to their interest and then uh, fundamentally you can provide feedback further to them. Then there are aspirations and passions what is making them to learn language, what is their aspiration behind it and what is, uh, what is the thing which is bringing them into the classroom. 
that matters a lot. So, what is their passion? What is their aspiration? What do they want to become? How are they going to use this language in their future? Uh, how this language is going to help them as far as their future prospects are concerned. So, these are the important things that you should always take care and uh, this will help you to identify that this that this learner is going to use your lessons in a specific domain or in a specific area. Now coming up to likes and dislikes, since likes and dislikes are important uh, for a learner's profile, now let us understand what life experiences can help the learner and the educator as far as their profiles are concerned. So, life experiences you know it tells a lot about a person. So, you can uh, think of uh, uh, their background as far as their life experience is concerned and you can think about their friends or their social circles in which they are enrolled in. If there is any uh, memorable incident that they would like to share, this will reveal that uh, uh, this will re reveal a lot about their emotional, psychological uh, and you can say uh, uh, social uh, influences uh, that uh, that is happening to the learner's uh, profile or, or that uh, that is happening to the learner's uh, uh, life. Therefore, experiences uh, reveal a lot about uh, a person's about decision making, about growth, about uh, their, uh, their utility, uh, their, uh, their, their idea of uh, using uh, this particular class in the next or you can say in the, in the later part of their life. So, uh, life experiences reveal not just the person's perception, but also gives a chance to the educator understand the learner in a better way and also respect uh, the diversity that he brings when it comes to the uh, incidents that comes to the experiences. And we should not forget that uh, not all experiences are good. Some children or some learners might have gone through some bad life experiences as well. So, how are you going to incorporate learning so that their bad experiences or you can say their uh, life, uh, their, uh, their experiences which were not really uh, important. So, when we talk about life experiences, it tells a lot about the learner's real life because it has uh, a lot of constituents in it. For example, one can easily identify social, psychological and emotional influences that have been taking place in a human's, uh, uh, in a human's nature. Therefore, if you are looking to design a learner profile and also you are looking to teach them, you need to understand what this person has gone through and we cannot forget that not every learner has a good uh, experience experience with regard to language learning or with regard to other uh, subjects or maybe with regard to the other uh, important uh, constituents of their lives be it emotional or uh, uh, psychological happenings. So, uh, it is important to look up at the life experiences as an important as an essential component because it will give a lot of clue about these about the learners decision making about the learners growth and also about uh, the a progressiveness that he or she consists of because that would reveal about uh, the learner's uh, growth in a in a in a in a in a, in a setting and uh, uh, we cannot uh, forget the point that uh, when it comes to bad experiences, a teacher or you can say an educator should not be uh, the person who ignores or who avoids or who does not respect, rather a teacher should understand and should go into the, some, the, the learner's shoes to identify what has happened and uh, if uh, counseling can help uh, emotionally, then I think it would really help the learner and the educator both. Uh, sometimes we uh, also observe that uh, when it comes to language teaching or when it comes to the school teaching, then learners were uh, enforced to memorize the language concepts. They were asked to memorize uh, 
uh, grammatical rules. However, some were not really good at graphic memory and they came out with uh, bad marks and therefore, they were on the verge of conclusion that they can't learn language. But I think there comes a role of a good educator. This educator can help the learner understand the uh, value of, mm, of, of, of understanding in context and can tell that this was just a part of a graphic memory and uh, it is better to learn language in context, it is better to demonstrate skills, it is a better to learn in more enhanced way so that life experiences, so that, uh, 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 so that better orientation can happen with, uh, uh, better orientation can happen in language uh, learning process. Now, one important component as it is mentioned here in the slide is how the learner likes to learn. Uh, in the last session, I discussed about the auditory and visual component or you can say auditory and visual inclination of the learner. Some learners come and say that they really do not want to read books because they have found themselves uh, uh, found themselves out of the context or you can say they have not been able to understand the tough vocabulary and sometimes they are not really uh, interested in uh, reading uh, those long pages. However, when it comes to audio visual aids, they are more inclined and they effectively learn. So, you can definitely prescribe or I can say advise those materials which are more enhanced and uh, have auditory and visual mode. However, uh, we say that reading is one of the important habits and uh, because it promotes learning, uh, it makes uh, the learner better in writing and speaking. Therefore, you can say that one needs to consciously read the book, one needs not to procrastinate when reading book. So, in this way a learner will be able to generate interest when it comes to reading. Now, coming up to the last point uh, of this slide, it is the struggles or potential barriers to learning. These, this is an important component because it will help you to understand that why your course or why your paper is not really progressing when it comes to their uh, outcome or you can easily identify that uh, uh, after knowing the potential barriers, uh, your learners when you get to know about these struggles or potential barriers that are happening at the level of students or at the happening at the level of uh, educator, then you are likely to work on that particular aspect and move gradually. Going on to the next slide, this can be done by the learner and I am sure this can be done at a little later. Uh, age when the learner is aiming to learn language as a second uh, language and therefore, if you give this task to the older learners, they will be able to write uh, and express themselves freely. So, as you can see, it gives a detail about the learner who come at a later stage and one of the important points as it is mentioned here is cultural connections and experiences. So, cultural connections like what is the culture do they belong to, what experiences have they encountered so far and is they going to make any significance as far as the language learning second language, English as second language learning is concerned or do you think that uh, we can imbibe all the cultures together and uh, introduce language there. Uh, when we talk about language, we cannot separate culture because both are inseparable and interrelated entities. Uh, we also have to understand that uh, what uh, language is uh, or you can say which language is uh, spoken when it comes to the learner uh, himself. So, uh, does he use uh, this uh, English language or does he use any regional language or does he use any other language frequently? If he or she is very much inclined to learn second language then what is the amount or you can say what is the probability of using this language in the outer world or in the real life situations in the outer 
outside outside the classroom so you need to look up at that language spoken perspective the more the learner uses the language outside the classroom is likely to learn uh, efficiently in uh, inside the classroom another important point that is mentioned here in this slide is things that student is good at so at some uh, skills learners are good at but at some skills learners are bad at for example a learner may be good at listening but may be bad at speaking right or maybe it happens vice versa learner may good at listening and speaking but bad at reading and writing so what do you think is the strength what do you think is the weakness if there is a weakness which is significant and we should not be ignored then you can uh, drop uh, your advice there you can drop your important lessons there and make their weaknesses as strengths now as i mentioned in the last slide memorable life experiences matter because uh, these uh, important uh, stories tell a lot about person's growth it tells social um, uh, emotional and psychological factors therefore you can understand a learner in a in a comprehensible way now uh, the point is how they like to relax so some would like to spend uh, time with friends some like to pursue their hobbies uh, some like to watch television some like to play internet uh, you know games which are available on internet and some like to work um, and cook dishes for their family so what do you think they are likely to do in their free time or how are they going to relax themselves when it comes to uh, the uh, when when it comes to the relaxation how are they going to uh, put their efforts so in this way you can uh, make wonders as an educator you can think that if a person is interested in conversation or he or she is more interested in social network, networking then you can assign task and you can give them topics you can indulge that person into more relaxing mode therefore if you find that a person is inclined towards uh, inclined towards cooking new dishes for example so you can ask that how to cook uh, a, a favorite uh, dish of yours right so a person would make would make a presentation will talk about ingredients will talk about the procedure will talk about the taste and also uh, he or she will discuss about its historical uh, significance with regard to the dish so you know you can think of those factors which a learner does at the time of relaxation and there you feel a magic magic that learner is a likely uh, learner has a started using language uh, uh, in an efficient way and also feels relaxed more comfortable uh, more enjoyable uh, in 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 uh, using language therefore likes and interests as i mentioned in the last slide it's important it directs a learner it uh, tells about the preferences and uh, it enhances the creativity uh, flexibility with regard to their interests also comes and when it comes to uh, uh, likes and uh, their dislikes so another important thing is how they like to learn and what helps things what make it hard for them to learn what they do when they need help so how they like to learn and what helps if they like to learn with games then of course you can provide a lot of material with games however when it comes to the heterogeneity some like to play games some like to play uh, some uh, some like to you know make paintings some like to uh, uh, some like to socialize or some have games as their uh, as their uh, important like so what you can do you can emerge uh, as a person who includes variety of tasks and activities so in this way you will be able to bridge the gap between people who come up with differences with difference of likes with differences 
of, of opinions. And there as the second last point which is mentioned here is, is the things that make it hard for them to learn. If you think that memorization, in fact memorization is always discouraged in language learning. It has never been a matter of uh, you know learning by heart. But if you think that um, uh, a certain way is not really interested to them and uh, you can bring a change then you can definitely do. And what they do when they need help. So, in this way uh, you will get to know that if a person is needing help or if the learner is really not uh, uh, expressive when it comes to the requirement or when it comes to the need then what you should do at that point of time. This idea will make an educator an inclusive one and it will promote uh, the concept of uh, learner centered class. Um, there are some important considerations that I would quickly go first is the age of the learner because it will determine whether the learner is old or young and in that way you will be able to understand that if this language is going to be processed as learning or acquisition then you are going to talk about that whether this la learning is uh, exposed already or not if the learner is already uh, have a knowledge of language uh, or not then there is um, immersion how much knowledge does he or she incorporates then there is about intelligence when we talk about intelligence we refer to multiple intelligence uh, I can just give you an example that you can't ask a fish to climb tree right similarly you can't ask monkey to swim so everybody has a different intelligence everybody has a different capability and if you give them a difference in if you give them a different task which they are not able to do so something which is out of their zone something which is out of their horizon then they are likely to feel more discouraged or you can say they are likely to have less interest in learning. Then there is a personality if they are extrovert or introvert, if there is an extrovert what sort of uh, a social networking do they possess and if there is introvertness then how do they express themselves and what inclination would you get when it comes to their um, immersion. Therefore, attitude negative or positive, if there is negative you can always try your best to change their motivation and uh, you can take the help of uh, motivational uh, talks which can help the learners change their attitude or improve their attitude rather. Then sensory style whether the learner is inclined towards visual or auditory then you have strategies for example. Uh, uh, are they going to learn through the traditional method are they really looking forward to listen to you or they are willing to participate in themselves if they are willing to participate then at what level and what is the task in which they are going to contribute in therefore strategy is important also that are they going to learn grammatical things or they are going to learn communicative or you can say the appropriacy of the language so if your focus is more on the appropriacy so it means you need to look up at the modern approaches which are available in the language pedagogy and we will discuss in the later session of this uh, of this course then we have motivation very much in very much interrelated to attitude as you see that strategies is there and then there is motivation um, uh, strategies will tell you that what sort of uh, uh, tactics you are going to apply in your classroom to bring their attention in and also motivation when it comes to uh, the encouragement when it comes to uh, increasing their um, interest in language learning. Now this is the summary uh, after this session this is the summary and in this session you we discussed about the key components of the second language pedagogy which include integrative and instrumental reinforcements 
we talk about the second language learning and second language acquisition, the difference between these two. Then we also understood the idea of critical period hypothesis which states that the first few years are important for the development of language and uh, we also talked about that children are postulated to create new connections daily and may handle the language learning process more effectively than do adults. Uh, Chomsky talked about uh, universal grammar where he discussed about the availability of language acquisition device and also we learn how to create a learner's profile what important components should you include. The main components of the learner's profile should include age, you should be able to distinguish old and young learners, uh, how much you know language they uh, learn and what is their exposure with regard to their usages, what is their immersion with regard to the language and what intelligence do, do they form and what kind of personality do they have when it comes to the language. Uh, learning. So, these are the references. With this, we have come to an end of this session. Thank you very much for joining.